uh, proceed with the uh, governor's reading and then uh, we'll go into our roll call. Okay, the Illinois phase four reopening plan limits meetings to 50 persons. Governor J.B. Pritzker's Executive Order 2020-07, as amended and extended through 2021-09, requires that public bodies take steps to provide video, audio, and or telephonic access to meetings. The CDC recommends social distancing of at least six feet between persons. City Hall is currently open to the public Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 p.m. To comply with these recommendations and requirements, the Police Community Relations Advisory Committee meeting on May 13, 2021, is being held via Zoom while still complying with the spirit of the Open Meetings Act. All right, thank you, Christina. Oh, before you continue, I met Christina for the first time yesterday. She She's a real person. <laughs> I met her for the first time yesterday. And so it's funny, like we've been doing this for a year plus now. So just had to put that out there. Uh, Christina, if you can move forward with our role, please. Sure, Andre Allen. Uh, present. Chief Boone. Present. Shalonja Birch, Terry Burnside, Allison Galvin. Present. Nina Gujas, Nikolai Greaves. Present. Lorraine King. Present. Sharon Kramer, Megan Nguyen. Present. Tyson Parks, Chief Theobald. Present. Karen Wilson. Present. And Janice Sagardo. Here. All right. I believe we have official quorum, Christina. Yes, correct. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, so let's go ahead now and uh, let's move forward. I um, hope everyone had a chance to review the minutes that Christina uh, sent out to us. Uh, thank you, Christina, as always, for preparing those. Um, is there, can I seek a motion to approve our minutes from our last uh, advisory committee on police community relations? So moved. All right, so moved by Chief Boone. Is there a second? Oh, second. Sorry. Okay, Karen can do it. All right, second by Miss Karen J. Wilson. Don't forget the J, because I won't. You better believe it. I won't, I won't, <laughs> I won't. Uh, and then, Christine, if you could proceed with uh, our voting roll call, please. Andre Allen? Yay. Chief Boone? Yay. Allison Galvin? Yay. Nikolai Greaves? Yay. Lorraine King? Yes. Megan Nguyen? Yes. Chief Theobald? Yes. Karen Wilson? Yes. And Janice Lagardo? Yes. All righty. All righty. Well, welcome, everyone. We kind of, you know, broke the ice a little bit with our conversations of uh, why Chief Boone does not age and why uh, Miss King is still looking not a day over 45. You go ahead, girl. Be great. Um, but, you know, this is the opportunity where I just want to check in on everybody to see how everybody's doing. Um, you know, I hope everyone uh, mental and physical wellness is, is, is going well. Um, please, you know, reach out to the committee if you ever need anybody to talk to. Um, you know, we are in some interesting times right now, but I, I'm seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, at my college, uh, after tomorrow, we're not taking temperatures anymore uh, when people come into the uh, into the camp on campus. So I think that's a step in the right direction. So who knows? We might be in person here soon. You never know. Um, that's so legendary. Awesome. I know, I know. We're, we have graduation Saturday and they were like, yeah, we don't need to take temperatures at graduation because after tomorrow we don't have to do it anymore. And I was like, cool, one less thing I got to get volunteers for. So uh, I'm, I'm excited there. So again, I hope you all are just doing good mentally and physically. And um, and if you ever need anything or anyone, just, just reach out to the committee, uh, definitely. So let's go ahead now and move into uh, unfinished business. Uh, the first item is item A, our virtual town hall series reboot. Um, at our last meeting, uh, we agreed that we want to go ahead and keep our town hall series going. Uh, we felt that we were starting to establish some momentum, although there was a, a, a couple of them that we didn't have the attendance that we would have wanted, but we were going against some conflicting events and activities. There was a mayoral forum, a mayoral candidate forum uh, one of those days. And so when you're competing against that, it's tough. But we do think, you know, with some intentional marketing and some community outreach, we can we can beef those up. 
Uh, so last week, myself and uh, Dr. Zagardo, uh, our vice chair, we met with uh, Stacy Peterson, uh, who does the, the, the marketing and, and strategic outreach with the city of Peoria. Uh, we met with uh, Maz Patel, Christina was on that call as well, uh, and, and, and Paul Peterson about relaunching our virtual town hall series. And so I just want to share some notes from, from that meeting and, and, and let you know kind of where, we, where we're heading. So um, again, we've been green lighted to continue our series. Uh, we have discussed doing it another three part series as well too. So this would be uh, the month of June, July, uh, and August. And then after that, we would reevaluate um, you know, our, our, our series, which we've done in the past. Um, the tentative dates that we were looking at, and uh, we're looking at still sticking with Thursdays, but we're looking at doing the uh, third Thursday of the month. So that would be essentially, excuse me, the week after our standing committee meetings. And those dates are June 17th, July 15th, and August 19th. Um, we were saying for the June 17th meeting, we would stick with the 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, format. And then uh, July and August, depending on where we are as far as the guidelines, if we're able to meet in person, um, then we might say, hey, let's, let's continue to keep it at 6 to 7 to give people a little bit more uh, time to commute to City Hall or if we pick a, a, another location within the city uh, or if we're still virtual, uh, which I pray that we're not, um, then we can consider saying, hey, let, let's move it up. Maybe we'll get more people if we do 5.30 to 6.30. Uh, but we're going to keep that, that first one uh, at 6 to 7, uh, at least tentatively. We will uh, vote to approve all of this. Um, and then from there, you know, we wanted to talk about the, the format. And so, um, you know, what we're thinking of is, and Dr. Zagardo has been um, spearheading this is, you know, thinking of how can we add a little bit more um, meat to our agendas, not only just with the town hall series, but also with our standing meeting. And I think uh, it's good to invite, you know, different leaders from the community, uh, different groups uh, to, to come in and talk about some of the things that they're doing, uh, maybe to, uh, you know, curve uh, crime or violence or um, you know any type of uh, deterrence efforts that uh, you know they're doing whether that's the the resource center that Chris Johnson is leading through the Peoria Police Department or anything that PCAF is doing uh, just so a way that we can uh, give them a platform and if hopefully the participants that are on that call can maybe say man I didn't even know there was a resource center on Wisconsin wow that's around the corner from my house oh wow I can use that to you know if I have an issue I can go there and talk to them so we want to start giving other groups uh, a platform using the platform that we have um, and then we talked about with each one of our town hall series is coming up with some themes for them, you know? And so I know last uh, month we talked about, you know, maybe one of them could be centered around the new police chief that will be hired, you know, sometime within, you know, with, I mean, that they're getting to the nitty gritty of that search. And so, you know, maybe that July meeting him or her, um, you know, that would be, maybe the theme would be, hey, we're introducing the, the new police chief of, of Peoria police to the community and we're gonna meet with him or her and we're gonna allow the community to maybe ask some surface level questions, maybe about his or her background, things of that nature. Maybe one of the themes is uh, youth um, resources for our youth and, and things of that nature. So then we talked about uh, you know, how we have uh, Solange Birch on our committee who does a lot of great things within uh, the juvenile uh, justice system. So again, just start thinking about some themes if, as far as like when we're marketing out our town hall series, we could say, hey, virtual town hall series, we'll be talking about this. And hopefully that will uh, increase our attendance if people see that this meeting is gonna be intentionally about a certain issue or a certain theme. Um, and then from there, we went into marketing, you know, and, and ensuring uh, that, you know, we take our marketing to the next game. So, you know, obviously we have our traditional means, you know, Stacy's doing a great job with, you know, writing the press releases and uh, putting things on Facebook and, and, and next door, uh, it's going on the city's website, but also though we need to we need a we we need some foot soldiers. We need some people who are pulling up at the different um, you know whether it's the NAACP meeting or whether it's the uh, War Chapel's uh, morning coffee on Mondays. Or I'm not sure if they're doing those virtual or in person, but I'm just thinking about things that are happening in our community that we could go ahead of time and tell them that hey we have this and we can really start growing our, our participation. Um, 
And then from there, we need to determine what is our measurements for success. So how are we ensuring that these are successful? Is that, you know, are we saying that we want to at least have 25 citizens at our meetings and we're not counted in that count? <laughs> you know, what is what is our measurement of success? So those are some things that, you know, we, we, we talked about uh, within the town hall series. So I'm going to stop talking now, but based off what I've said and, and Dr. Zagardo, if there's anything that I left out from our meeting, please chime in. But I just want to open up the floor for discussion uh, around the virtual town hall series reboot and any questions, comments, concerns you may have uh, about it. I have my hand up. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Ms. King. I just wanted to say that the third Thursday is the standing board meeting for the NAACP and Nina and I would both be in conflict. That is, you are absolutely correct. Um, so if we do, because, okay, thank you for sharing that. Because if we do, um, so the first Thursday, the issue with that one is June 3rd, I had a conflict. And so I didn't want us to, because I want to, whatever Thursday we pick, I want us to stay consistent. I don't want to do like the first Thursday in June and the third Thursday in July. Um, okay. Now, we could, we could look into the last Thursday of the month, which would be, uh, that would put us at June 24th, uh, June 22nd, I'm sorry, no, June, no, uh, June 24th, July 20, hold on, I'm trying to look at my calendar here. Let's see, that'd be June 24th, um, July 29th. And then that would be, that would have us at August 26th would be our town hall series. If I'm adding seven days to July 15th, I think you were right the first time, July tw July 22nd. Were you saying fourth or last? I'm saying fourth. the last. Well, that's the 29th. If it's, if it's the fourth, if July 15th is the third, then add seven days, you get the 22nd. I think you might have no, been. No, no, July 15th is the second Thursday. Oh, okay. So that was wrong. Okay. So July's a weird month. It has like, five Thursdays in it because <laughs> it starts on the first it's like five Thursdays in right so then the fourth Thursday is the 22nd yeah so when's our meeting then it's mm -hmm. if we if we stay with the fourth let's see that would be so the fourth would be the 24th of, of June the fourth would be the 22nd and if I'm looking at my calendar correctly Miss King your NAACP meeting is the 29th of, of, uh, it's, the, it's the third Thursday. It's always the third Thursday, so it would be the 15th. So you would be the 15th. Okay. So we could, because I definitely want you and Nina to, to be there if possible. So you know what, Andre, this gets to the same thing we've been talking about for like three years is getting a calendar together, like yeah. for all these things that people might be interested in that. Yeah, I just have standing meetings on the second Thursday and the third Thursday. Mm hmm Yeah, no, I feel you. That's why, like, I avoided, like, Wednesdays. Those are just, those seem like to be big board meeting meetings for myself just personally. And then now my Tuesdays are uh, caught up with uh, council now. Um, yeah. and, then, and then no one wants to do a meeting on, on a Monday evening. I mean, let's just, let's just keep it honest. Uh, so, uh, but, do, but do we have conflicts on the fourth Thursday? It didn't sound like we did. Nobody said anything. Yeah, we're having discussion around that now. Uh, what are some other thoughts uh, around potentially going to the fourth Thursday? That would be June 24th, July 22nd, and then August 26th. I don't know. I don't know if, uh, for, at least for me, a fourth Thursday shouldn't be a problem. Um, so I could I can keep that open. I, I think part of the challenge is um, my employer tends to not be ahead of time sometimes in, in communicating meetings. Like they could literally call a meeting three, three days or two days before 
Um, like I have a finance investment committee meeting that's going to be coming up in a bit. And they just told us clearly yesterday. So, um, so I can definitely plug that in and, and work with that. So I could you know, be, be, be there for these. But yeah, so no, far, no. they haven't done it on the fourth. So uh, fourth is usually uh, XCOM. So I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. And for sure. And I, I definitely understand, you know, we, uh, you know, the check got to cash every other Friday. And so uh, if you have to make it because you have a, a work commitment, um, team no judge, sir, you know, it's all good. I think uh, today what we will do is we will at least solidify, you know, whether we're going to do the third Thursday or the fourth Thursday. So then that way we can all get these on our calendar and then hopefully, and we all know life happens, but hopefully it would work around. Um, Karen, uh, Megan, uh, Let's see, uh, anyone else, um, you know, what are your thoughts? Allison, your thoughts on that fourth Thursday? Any uh, questions, comments, concerns uh, against that? Fourth Thursday is good for me. Um, yeah, the, the third would be a conflict for me mm -hmm. um, for NAACP. But other than that, yeah, I'm good. OK. Hey, this is Allison. I was going to wait. Oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, Megan, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to wait till new business. It all kind of sounds great, but I actually, this actually will be my last meeting. I will be moving out of state this, by the end of this summer, and I will be done with the city um, soon as well. So unfortunately, <laughs> whatever meeting you guys decide on, I, I support you, but uh, I, I probably won't be able to make that. Uh, unless it's virtual. <laughs> Congratulations. Where are you Thank going? Thank you so much. I will be headed back out to Washington, D.C. to pursue my graduate studies. All right. Well, you could go to graduate school right here in Central Illinois, Megan. <laughs> Where are you going, Megan? What school? Um, I will be at George Washington University. Oh, prestigious. Oh, okay. Good school. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no. Well, but it, I hope yeah. I am able to see you all again, maybe one last time before the meet. Unfortunately, I had to call in today, so I can't see you virtually. But you know, it, it's been a pleasure to serve. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait till till new business. I don't want to take up any time um, right now. But just sorry for the uh, abrupt uh, <laughs> announcement. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna, we're going to wait to items for the good of the cause of the agenda yes. to give you your virtual clap that you deserve. I'm happy. Thank you, uh, Allison. But so that date worked. That date sounds great. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for your uh, your 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 vote of support there. I appreciate it, uh, Allison. Sorry about that. Um, I will be able to do either. I'm open to the third or fourth Thursday of the month. Um, I have no conflicts. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. So sounds like we have consensus around the fourth Thursday. Um, so, then, so that way, um, I know that we are missing some committee members, but we do have to, we, we do need to move forward just so that way we can uh, start uh, properly planning and strategizing and marketing uh, these town hall series. So um, at this time, I would like to uh, seek a motion uh, to approve the tentative dates of our virtual town hall series reboot of Thursday, June 24th, Thursday, July 22nd, and Thursday, August 26th. So move, Ms. King. I'll second. All right. A motion by Ms. King, second by Dr. Zagardo. Um, Christina, if you could do our roll call, please. Andre Allen. Yay. Chief Boone. Yes. Allison Galvin? Yes. Nikolai Greaves? Yes. Lorraine King? Yes. Megan Nguyen? Yes. Uh, Chief Theobald? Yes. Karen Wilson? Yes. And Janice Segardo? Yes. All righty. Sounds good. Sounds good. So we, um, we've got some time to our first one. Uh, obviously, we have a little over a month, but it will sneak up on us. Um, you know, so now what I would like us to do is just do some just some preliminary brainstorming of some some themes that we see for these town hall series. And then from there, we could build an agenda, you know, offline um, 
off of that. But, you know, what are some what are some themes that come to your mind? Um, you know, I think obviously I think maybe that second meeting in July, I think should be themed around the new police chief, because I my 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 gut is that he or she will have been relocated to Peoria or if that person's internal, they don't have to go too far. But um, that July 22nd, I think we could we should cater it around he or she. Um, how do you all feel about that? Agree. Okay. okay, sounds good. So Andre. Can you hear me? It's Kelly. Yes, I can. Um, tonight on the news, they interviewed the police chief of Peoria, and it wasn't Douglas Theobald. I don't know who it is. Did we hire one? Chief Theobald? You <laughs> That's on the agenda, isn't it, for tonight? Um... Kelly, I'm not. Where, where did, where did you see this at? Um, Channel Seven, which would be CBS, Rebecca Brumfield, that group. Um, they interviewed the gentleman. He kind of has red hair. He was sitting in front of the screen in the conference room with all the Peoria Police Department logos and stuff like that. And she introduced him as the chief of police. And I thought, gee, Doug, you grew some hair. Well, yeah, that'd be nice. I'd take that, but uh, that's if it was about an investigation that could have more than likely been Captain Dixon. And sometimes the reporters, uh, you know, they especially there's a lot of new reporters out there, and I, I isn't I there them. though? Yeah, so they could have just misidentified the rank. That happens from time to time. But uh, I'm guessing if you're identifying as a, a redheaded guy, but that'd probably be Captain Dixon. If it wasn't, okay. fact, uh, um, I think he described it as being an art board or with the, the background of Peoria Police. So I haven't seen that one yet. So, okay. Or, or Captain Dixon didn't tell me something I didn't know. <laughs> no, but uh, um, that, that happens from time to time. Did you put in your desire to be continuing to be the chief? Uh, no, ma'am, I did not. Did You're a smart man. <laughs> Well, we almost had some 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 breaking news on this on this meeting, uh, and we'll have some context around the uh, chief of police uh, search update uh, actually in, at our next item. Um, so we will uh, so we will stay in the theme of that for that second meeting. What are we thinking about is a good theme for our um, intro meeting for for June twenty fourth? Maybe somehow or another explaining what. The committee is how it was founded. Um, just kind of getting people familiar with who's on it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea, but I also think we need to let people know um, more about it and that they can come to this committee and discuss things if there is a problem. People don't know about it. Agree. Yep. No, I, I agree. So background overview of the committee, similar to what we did in our first meeting. Um, and yeah, yeah, we're we're always welcome to ideas about, I mean, I guess we call it marketing, but getting the word out. So if anybody has ideas about that. How, we're how, how about how to conduct yourself during a stop? You know, well, so with the things that are in the news right now, you know, um, we always in the NAACP, educate, comply, and complain later. But in some of those, the outcomes, you do that and you still end up not in a good way. So maybe that's something, um, maybe maybe not the, well, yeah, we could probably do it a couple of times, you know, the first and um, towards the end, because um, I know myself, uh, if you clap at me, I'm gonna clap back sometimes and not in the most appropriate ways. So that's just kind of in our nature, especially for African Americans. That's just kind of in our nature. So um, you know, just speak how do... <laughs> well, don't speak for everybody. You're speaking for Karen. Yeah, I, I know. Um, You're not speaking for all African Americans. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that that's something I think we can explore about, you know, from front to back, as, especially in this area, what they expect because my thing and 
I'm just like, if people, if you're going to run, why even go through all that? You've got the plates, go pick them up. You know, I don't, I don't understand how it escalates to that. So. so Karen, I think that's a really interesting idea. And when you did that with the NAACP, do you, I mean, that is police community relations. I mean, there couldn't be anything more on the nose. Do, do you have members of the, you know, the officers there sharing also, or is it just citizens or how did you schedule the program? I mean, how did you uh, uh, they, from national, we had a little, uh, cause I used to, um, I carry it in my purse. They had a little booklet that was like the 411 on 50, and they would tell you verbatim what to do, what, you know, as members, what we can do, what, what our rights are, all that. But, um, you know, it probably could stand to be updated and, and, you know, spread around to everybody. So, but yeah, it came from national. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good topic. I think also too, I would like to, um, and invite um, at least one residential officer to that. I think that that is a, a great program that, you know, having someone that is in that position to talk about, you know, their, their benefit to the community they're living in and, and, and how they are a resource to the neighborhoods and, and, and shining a light on that. So uh, I'm just taking some notes. So I, I like the idea of the background, obviously overview of the committee, and then also, um, you know, how to conduct yourself you know during traffic stops i think having a, an officer uh provide some guidance on on that um or right. or a member of the naacp if, if they are comfortable in and in, in leading that type of discussion um I and think then, that our officers need some more training on how to react act or be assertive in a stop yeah I held monthly meetings in the East Bluff a couple of years ago. And every time I had one, all the police officers that were working the East Bluff part-time, full-time or whatever came. And the residents up here loved it. They got to know them. Um, things calmed down for a while. Mm -hmm. And they're usually more than willing to come. So Chief, I, I know that there's a nationwide conversation about just stopping traffic stops completely. Has the Peoria police talked about that at all? Or is that something that's still on the table? Have you heard about that conversation? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of those, uh, you know, I don't want to call it a topic, but I, I think that, you know, that, that's coming from a lot of different places, but I, you know, we have some things obviously in motion with the legislation that, uh, you know, is in play and how, how those things will occur. But, I, you know, I, you got to wonder sometimes weighing that out, you know, traffic enforcement in itself, you know, if, if, you, if you don't have any of those deterrents, what, what your fatality rates would look like, all those things are to take consideration. But I, I think to get back on the topic, uh, what Andre was talking about in reference to the the next meeting, whether it's in person or, you know, maybe we'd be lucky enough to have it in person by June if, if things continue, uh, or or virtual. I, I, I wouldn't want to overwhelm everybody uh, with so many topics and so many different personnel. But I think if we're looking for resident officer, we can definitely get one get one for that meeting. And I think if we're going to get into the topics of stops specifically um cooperation on stops tactics on stops I, I think i would probably ask our field training officer sergeant to to maybe be included in that because they could they could talk about um you know what what training is occurring uh, to not only the new officers that are that are out there but you know, some experience from their perspective over the years too. Um, so, you know, I think that training part is, an, is important. Um, you get the community perspective on, on the person that, that might be getting stopped, but the, the why I think we get answered um, based on the field training sergeant. So I, I think those two, maybe for the next meeting, if anybody would, you know, agree, uh, just so we don't, you know, have so many people in the, on the call that we go, you know, a whole different direction. 
Um, but I could, I could probably get those two people for the next June meeting if you want. And then we could expand from there. I, you know, I could definitely uh, agree that I think, uh, as Andre said, it, July would, the timeliness of that should, should work out. Um, there's a possibility if things go efficiently to June, we might actually have a chief in place, but um, obviously that, that person is going to have to have some time to get adjusted too. So right. um, let me know what you think or what you want and uh, we'll make it happen. Those are two very good topics, but it seems to me that one meeting could be about the residential officer because they do a lot of things. And then the next meeting could be about um, the other topic. Uh, it's a lot to cover in one meeting. Yeah, because we only we have a an hour, um, and, and it'll, it'll go fast. Uh, and so um, it could be two different ones, and then we could we could technically invite the new chief to the August meeting. Um, but I would like he or she to be introduced a little earlier. I think I think that July meeting is a, a good time to introduce that person. I agree with you, Andre. Mm -hmm. This city needs some stability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Speaking from a marketing perspective, which of these two is likely to bring the most interested people so we can make some noise? When you say you got the new chief of police on the on the Zoom call, is that, uh -huh. that, oh, that oh, I meant of the uh, you know I meant for June if we don't, oh, we don't oh, get okay. the chief for June. It's for, if we're going to split this up into two spots. We t you and I talked about resident officers, mm -hmm. Demario. You need to know you have a target on your back because we've heard you're a great presenter also we'd love to hear about the work you're doing in the schools you know we have a short list um but karen i think this is a great idea um which one do you guys think we should do for june we can save the other one for august because it because i do think it's a lot to go over in one hour because andre i do like the introduction you give about you know what the committee is why it's there i think that we should do that for every um uh -huh. meeting. Yeah, I think that's good too. I think that's a good idea. So what we can do is, is we can, the first meeting can be obviously background overview of the committee. And then we can go into, I think having the, the field training officer would be great. Um, so then that way, you know, we're setting the, we're setting the tone for the summer of, you know, expectations on both sides from citizens, but then also from law enforcement and hopefully um, from that dialogue, you know, that allows for interactions throughout the summer to be positive because the expectations are have now been illustrated on both sides through our town hall series. Hopefully it's well attended and, you know, and, and that could be dispersed throughout our community. Uh, and then July, we'll have the chief of police come. And in August, then we can go into the uh, residential officer program. Um, and then anything else that might, you know, I mean, these are these don't have to be set in stone, but I think just having a, a general idea of an offense of what we want to do with these is, uh, is, is, is good. So um, does that sound pretty okay with everyone? Yeah, I think either the resident officer or the resource center, but we could do one in September also if we decide to extend mm -hmm. whatever people think is, you know, whatever people think is going to provide the greatest service to the community in terms of information sharing. Mm -hmm. And overall, um, Dr. Zagardo, the theme for August could be resources. And so resources could be the resource officer, and then also, you know, what they're doing at the resource center and just some couple other things as well, too. And then we could if we have three or four presenters, we can let he or, he or she know, hey, you've got three to five minutes to, to talk about the resources that you'll provide. And then what we'll do is, is we'll create a, a master contact list that we can send out to all the participants afterwards um, if they want to follow up with those individual pretend, uh, presenters. All right. So we That's got good. We got some themes, look at us getting stuff done. All right, sounds good, sounds good. So um, if there's not any further discussion, I think we can go ahead and, and, and move on from our uh, virtual town hall series. Um, and so, yeah, so Chief, if you can move forward with uh, connecting with your, uh, your field training officer uh, or, or leader in that realm, that'd be great for that June 24th meeting. Don't we have more than one FTO? Yeah, I was just in it, Kenny. We have the we have a supervisor that's over all the field training officers. Actually, we have a, we have an FTO on the call right now. Saul's still with us. I couldn't see him on my screen, but uh, in our union. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so you know, Saul's an FTO, so he'll also be on the call hopefully on that day if he's available. But 
I think the overall perspective was is we get the supervisor there that's in charge of our our FTOs, which is there then in charge of all our recruits, uh, to give a better explanation of 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 the whole training aspect of it, the how it works and and what the expectations are. Because I think that's what we're trying to get at uh, with the questions and answers on that particular topic. Yep. Nope, I agree. So let's go ahead now and move on to item B, uh, Chief of Police Search Update. Um, we received some uh, updates today from the city manager. Um, Christina, can you do me a favor? Can you go ahead and uh, share city manager's, um, he, city manager Yurik wanted to be here today, but he had a conflict of interest. So he shared with us some docs that we can uh, kind of review. If you could share the, the memo uh, that he sent to uh, myself and our uh, committee, please. And then if you're able to zoom in a little bit. Wow, they've got 22 applicants. No, so those are the, the, the panelists. So I'm gonna go through and I'll, I'll read it. Um, not that you all can't read, but just for uh, the record for those who come back. Um, and so it is read as follows. Um, thank you for what you're doing for the city in Peoria. Thank you for what you're doing for the city and police community relations. I cannot attend the meeting this evening. So I'm sharing with you, sharing this update with you. This past week, we conducted the first round of interviews with four candidates for the chief of police. At this point in the selection process, our executive recruiters from Gov HR screen, the 22 applicants for the position, none were eternal candidates. From this list, the recruiters recommended six candidates to bring forward for interviews. Of those six, following a discussion with the city manager and the human resources director, the list of candidates was narrowed to five. As of last week, one of the five candidates dropped out of consideration. The interviews with the candidates were held via Zoom with broad cross-section of community and city and county participating uh, in the interviews. The interview panels heard the responses of all the candidates and the panelists provided their thoughts and insights to the city manager during the recap meeting. The following is a list of individuals who participated in the panel interviews. Chris Setti, Greater Peoria Economic Development Council, Joshua Gunn, Greater Peoria Chamber of Commerce, Christelle uh, for our I'm sorry, Christelle, you're my girl too, I'm sorry. Uh, Hispanic <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, <laughs> Commerce uh, Conrad Stenick, West Bluff, West Bluff Council, Gene Rayford, Neighborhood uh, Representative, Willa Lucas, Neighborhood Representative, Dennis Lippert, Neighborhood Representative, Ryan Height, Neighborhood Representative. And so those are people who are, who are active in their respective uh, neighborhood associations. Uh, Sue Katz, Jewish uh, Federation, Syed Ahmad, Islamic Center, Martin Johnson, New Beginners Ministries, Marvin Hightower, NAACP, Becky Rosman, PCAF, uh, Dr. Zer Dr. Zero, Dr. Janice Zagardo, representing the Peoria uh, Police Advisory Commission on Police Community Relations, Wayne Nolan, Faith Co uh, Coalition for Racial Equity, Brian Asbell, Sheriff, Jody Hoos, State's Attorney, uh, Doug Theobald, Interim Police Chief, David Tuttle, uh, ECC Manager, uh, Mary Ann uh, Stalkup, HR Director, James Backman, Fire Chief, Rhonda Seisman, uh, Sexton, excuse me. I'm reading off a cell phone and it is very small, so I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't read. Ask Me President, uh, Troy Skaggs, Peoria Police, um, Bevanel President, uh, Christy Peterson, Interim Corporation Counsel, Jim Scroggins, Finance Director, Steve Hughes, African American Police Officer Association, Deborah Bush, Human Resources, and Patrick. Uh, your city manager. From this input, I will determine which candidates to bring forward for a face-to-face -face interview with the city manager, mayor, members of the city council, and the names of the finalists will be released to the public at that time. I have included with this memo survey results from the department and citizens interview, citizen surveys conducted earlier this year. Should you have questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. And so what he shared and what I will also forward to the committee, uh, and I believe Dr. Zagardo, you asked about this, is uh, the, the data that was collected in those surveys that we did. And so um, that information has all been uh, compelled. 
uh, compiled, excuse me. And from what I've been told, it was used to help draft a, a lot of the questions that were asked. Um, Christina, if you could just open up one of those just for us to reference real fast. And like I said, I'm gonna share these with the committee. Um, so that way you all can dive into those. And so I haven't had a, like I said, we just got this today. So I haven't had a chance to, to really dive in uh, quite yet, but you can just kind of see, you know, some of the themes that were used uh, you know, when asking the first question, what type of leader should you uh, have as a uh, police chief? Um, and it looks like the one that uh, that led at almost 70 percent is uh, approachable. Um, approachable, uh, they are out in the community and will listen. Uh, that was 68 percent. You can scroll down, please. Yep, and you keep keep scrolling for me, please. So you you'll see like other. So Andre, what what people can? What people are going to notice, you're going to get two versions of this. One, this is 200 pages long. Um, the other one you're going to get is actually the city employees, and it's only about uh, this covers 600 something answers and the city employee one covers under a hundred. And I found it interesting to put both documents up at the same time and scroll through the answers together to see there's a, just a little bit of difference. And it's interesting, it's subtle, but interesting to see what city employees perspective versus citizen perspective. So. Um, it's a lot to go through, but it kind of gave me a little bit of um, context just to see the difference. Look at you, Dr. Zagardo, diving into that data. <laughs> diving into that data. I see you. I you see know you. I love data. I know. I know. That's why as soon as I got it, I was like, I got to forward it to you. I didn't even. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Um, luckily, we got it before, uh, you know, a little bit before we sat in on the sessions. Um, and it's, 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 you know, quite honestly, not. I, I don't know what, what you guys think, but there's nothing that's incredibly surprising. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice that people took the time to do it though. Yeah, no, that is, that is. Uh, Dr. Zagardo, can you just talk a little bit about your experience uh, in, the, in the session? And thank you for taking time to represent the committee um, on that. You know, can you talk a little bit about that experience? So I, I'm in the, if you look at the names around my, not the neighborhood representatives, but the names below, uh, starting with Sue Katz. I was in a small panel um, with those names above and below mine. Not, not the sheriff, but the ones between neighborhood representative and sheriff on the list when you get it. Mm -hmm. So it was an interesting panel. And, and I gotta tell you that in this day of Zoom, it's gotta be, I think there's pluses and minuses and things that make it both easier and harder for the candidate. Um, it, so I was on panel B, and so a, I, I thought initially that maybe multiple different candidates were in different panels, but I think what happened, and Chief, you can correct me if I, if I misspeak here, I think the same four candidates interviewed with different groups of people on this list, and so they had to face the same, was it 19 questions in one hour, I think three, I know at least three times, possibly four times. So I don't know how they felt about repeating themselves that many times, but I, I honestly was pretty impressed. Um, there are four completely different personalities. It, I don't know, Chief, what you think, but different backgrounds, different approaches. I think we're going to be in good shape, you know, regardless of, of who we get. They were very forthcoming. Um, most of them uh, we're very committed to community relations. It seems most knew about the resident officer program um, and wanted to, you know, continue that. Um, I some of the actual police operations stuff probably went over my head because I don't understand, you know, you know, I'm not that familiar with all that stuff. But so I was listening from the perspective of our committee and community relations. 
and they all seemed friendly to it. There were some that had long careers in the police uh, force and others that had skipped around to different positions. So it's an interesting mix of candidates and um, it'll be interesting to see who they choose. I think, I think it'll be, I think it's what I sent to uh, Mr. Yurik was I think it's important that we do bring some of them in for final interviews just to see how they behave differently, you know, not on Zoom. So I'm I'm wondering, I think Chief was the only other, I'm not sure if any other of our committee were on this, but uh, what did what did you think, Chief? Yeah, I agree. And uh, you know, I I I think especially the you know multiple panels and I, I assume I, I think Janice that the one you were on was probably just as lengthy as the one I was on. And I was, you know, from my perspective thinking about it, of course I had the questions in front of me, but is you know you're, you're almost talking about back to back and then three hours of interviews and that that can cause some fatigue for anybody's interview for a job especially one like this um you know so i i, I think uh you know it's 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 a little bit different than the way things have been done before you know but we have a lot of input here right we have the survey which kind of helped form the questions and we have a lot of people involved and um, a lot of different perceptions and aspects to the whole uh, but, you know, I think they, they did a pretty good job considering that. And, and for me, uh, you know, I would always prefer to do one in person. So I think, you know, there's, there's something for that. This is personally, but, um, but be able to go uh, from one to the other. And for that length of time, um, it was taxing on them. I'm sure it was. They were probably ready for a nap after they were done. Because I think from, from the scheduling aspect of it, not positive about this, but uh, you know, there's two different days that I think they got off of one Zoom and then went directly within minutes to the next panel. And uh, you know, logistically, that was that was a good way to set it up for them for a day. But um, it it had been uh, some fatigue there too. Um, yeah, and if they were asked the same questions in all four panels, they can't probably couldn't remember what they said in one versus yeah. the other. And and um, committee, we're not being vague. We're not trying to be vague here, but we're not allowed to release the names uh, or cities of where these people were from because they haven't told their employers yet. And I think we will, uh, according to this memo, all we know is what we see in this memo is that they will be reducing releasing the names of the finalists uh, after they determine them. Makes sense. Yeah, which is which is good. Also, which is which is common normally in, in, in searches, and then that way we can all do our Facebook creeping and, and LinkedIn creeping <laughs> and all that stuff. No, <laughs> they're gonna Google you. <laughs> they're gonna Google you. Yeah, uh, I can't bring myself to do that yet. I mean, you are um, wrong for that. <laughs> you know it's gonna happen. You know it's gonna happen. That's that's the time we live in. That's why you're only as good as your last screenshot. They say uh, you gotta sorry. cleanse your Google, right? You gotta, sometimes you got to Google yourself to see what comes up. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm ex I appreciate uh, City Manager Yurik providing us with that update. Um, like I said, after the the, the meeting, uh, I will uh, forward the attachments that we received earlier from City Manager Yurik, so you all can go through. Um, and then what I will do is, is I will uh, we'll leave this as an unfinished business item for uh, our June meeting. Uh, because hopefully at that time we'll have an update of who was hired. But then also too, if you all want to have any uh, additional discussion around the results, maybe you notice some themes. I think Dr. Zagarda pointed out, you know, a, a great um, a great indication that there's some differences between what city employees maybe you're looking for and then what our uh, citizens are are looking for. So mm -hmm. I think that's some good things. So maybe we could see some themes in there. So uh, overall, I appreciate City Manager Yurik uh, providing that. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and move forward to uh, item C. Uh, we talked about a, a while ago doing a panel around the uh, HB uh, 3653 uh, legislation that is coming out. And from my opinion, it seems that it's still ongoing discussion with that. Um, I think a panel discussion is, is necessary, but also I think that uh, it'll be necessary once we we get a, a confirmation of, of what this looks like so we can have a conversation that's based off of not necessarily the what ifs, but the the what are's. And so um, I think that this would be appropriate to, to table until we get some definite confirmation on this is what's coming down the pipeline. 
this is what's being implemented. So what are you all's thoughts on, on tabling this until we get a little bit more clarity that this is the this is the what are's and not the what ifs, and then we can move forward with reaching out to the appropriate stakeholders and, and really have a robust panel at that time. I agree. Uh, Agreed. I agree. Awesome. Okay, sounds good. So at this time, I would like to seek a motion to table uh, the HB 3653 panel discussion. I move. All right. Second. Moved. Yep, moved by uh, Nikolai and second by Chief Boone. Uh, Christina, can you please perform the role? Andre Allen? Yay. Chief Boone? Yes. Allison Galvin? Yes. Nikolai Greaves? Yay. Lorraine King? Yes. Megan Nguyen? Yes. Chief Theobald? Yes. Karen Wilson? Yes. And Janice Sagardo? Yes. All right. Thank you, Christina. So now we're going to move forward to new business. Uh, item A, committee updates, uh, chair and current opening. So um, I have, as you all know, I've been uh, elected to the city council. And so I will have to step down as a thank you. I will have to step down as a traditional uh, member of our committee. Uh, I've talked to Mayor Ali about uh, applying to be appointed as the city council liaison. So essentially, I will be taking the goal is to take her role as she was to, to us. Um, I feel passionate about our committee. I feel like um, we have some momentum going and, and I want to still be a part of it. And also I like seeing you guys once a month, you know, what can I say? And, and twice a month when we have our town hall. So uh, that is ideally the, the goal uh, for what I want to do. Um, but that, that being said, there will be a chair opening. Um, and so I know that uh, we reached out to uh, Moz and Moz is doing some research for us to see um, what does that look like? I know that I want to say I, I took the chair role in, in June of last year. So we'll be coming up on that year. Um, and so once we get a little bit more uh, insight, cause I know Maz, we kind of threw that on you at the, uh, at the end of the day today. So I'm sure you probably haven't performed the research, which is fine. Um, but I think it's pretty much safe to say that at our June meeting, we need to be thinking about voting a, a new chair. Uh, and we, and, but at that time too, though, um, depending on the research performed, it might be time to vote for chair and, and vice chair as well, um, and just and just do it all do it all fresh at, at that time. Um, so I, what I what I would like to do is I would like to challenge you all to tonight when you when you look yourself in the mirror to say you know what, am I ready to step up to be chair of this committee or I, or am I ready to step up to be vice chair, um, and, and and think about that. Uh, and then also we do have some openings. Uh, Megan just dropped on us. She's going to DC to live her uh, her best life. Uh, and, and we're excited to see her uh, fly her wings. It's very bittersweet though to lose you, Megan. Um, so that's one opening that I know of. Thank you. Oh yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, so that's one opening that I know of. And then, Christina, not to put you on, on the on on the spot right now, do you know how many other openings we currently have on our committee outside of the now the uh, myself essentially, and then because uh, I'm an at large member, make it under 25, and then were there any additional ones as well that you know of? Um, so we have city manager's office, um, and then city council. But okay, okay, so. So essentially from a citizen standpoint, we will just have my vacant at large spot and then Megan's under 25 spot. Okay. Did we have somebody out from the fourth district? Um, Chief Boone, are you our fourth district representative? Uh, I shouldn't be. <laughs> That's not where I stay. Why did I think I, you lived in the fourth? I think it's a, I think I saw your wife at Casey's one time. Maybe. You know, so I, I live by you. <laughs> I live by you. You you live by me, right? Yep, yep. But you're not in the fourth. Where where, where oh, are you? Living? No, I'm thinking I'm thinking four districts, police wise. I'm sorry. Yeah, I might be the. Uh, yeah, you know what I might oh, be. Okay. That. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I know I ain't tweaking. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking police. I'm sorry. 
No, it's all it's all good. It's all good. So yeah, I think Chief Rule is our our fourth district rep. Okay. And and Chief, I had I mean uh, Mr. Chair had already given some thought and I nominate Janice Legardo to be the new chair. Hey, save save that nomination because you're gonna need to clap <laughs> next month. Go ahead and say that. Yeah, go ahead and save that. So um so what we'll do is is once we get a little bit more information about elections. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll get an email out to you all. So that way you all can plan, uh, you know, whether you want to, uh, strategically nominate somebody. Uh, I don't think there's anything against self-nominating, but I think you, if, if you do want to be nominated, maybe just hit up somebody and say, Hey, can you nominate me? Cause I want to go for the chair. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but we definitely need to ensure though, that we, we get someone to fill my, my at-large seat. So essentially, um, I'm assuming those appointments will be, you know, they'll be on the, the city's website and for people to apply. Um, and then obviously Mayor Ali, she will uh, approve those appointments. Um, I've had a couple people ask me who are interested in our advisory committee, uh, but let's be strategic. If you all think about some people, maybe, you know, once the once they're up there um, for availability, send them out to people and let's try to get the, the best replacements that we can. Um, any uh, additional questions about kind of where we are as far as our, uh, our committee updates? Um, I will say before we transition to general police updates, I appreciate you all letting me be your chair uh, this past year. Um, you know, it has been a, a tremendous honor, um, you know, stepping into this, to this role, uh, even, even though we had to do Zoom, but I really appreciate you all uh, putting up with me and, and and me, you know, saying, hey, even though we we virtual, we gotta we gotta keep this thing going uh, and stuff too. So I really appreciate you all's opportunity and to allow me to to lead this committee. And like I said, I still want to be a part of it so that way we can continue to keep making some positive waves in our community. Thank you. Yeah, Andrea, I want to say I think you've really brought us farther into the future here. And just even though it was on Zoom. And I like your idea of being intentional about finding some at-large members. We need to find some people who care enough about this that they're going to show up and also that they're going to bring some interested community members with them to participate and, you know, maybe be kind of representatives of wherever they're living and what people are thinking in their, you know, their neighborhood. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's not a huge commitment. I mean, it's just couple yeah. Thursday evening so I agree and then I, also, I, like I was reviewing the uh, the fair housing uh, commissions because I had to do a, a little presentation on that a couple weeks ago and I noticed in their bylaws they actually have something that if you miss more than like three meetings um, they essentially ask you to resign and I think that that's something that we might want to consider regarding uh, verbiage um whether it's, I, think, I thought we already had that when i came on i thought they already had it because... it's possible that if, if you if you've rsvp'd that you're coming and we're counting on you for a quorum that mm -hmm. you miss that 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 kicks in but i i i don't usually read the fine print so i'm not exactly yeah sure. i need to review that and i mean we could talk about how we want that you know to to, to be be seen and maybe make an amendment um but I think that that's something that we need to consider when we are talking about moving forward, because the best ability is availability. And that's, uh -huh. we, we definitely need that. And we all know that life happens. And so I don't want the same six, seven people to always feel like, man, if I don't make it to the meeting this month, they're not going to have quorum, but I got an obligation and I feel bad, you know? So we want to make sure that everybody's equally sharing, uh, you know, you know, sharing the responsibility of, of, of attendance. So that will be something that I'll, I'll want to look into before I transition as chair, just to ensure that, um, you know, we, we always are making quorum, but then not, not even just barely making quorum, like we're having, you know, 10 plus me, uh, members, you know, at each meeting, if, if possible, get it. But we know life happens, so. Um, I know on, on the other commissions, the disability commission, that's the standard three and you're out. You can't yeah. make it, then they don't want you on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that we have that too. Yeah, I need to I need to review that because if we do, <laughs> I need to review that, uh, Miss King, for sure. And thanks for sharing that, Kelly. 
Uh, let's, let's now let's move on to uh, general police updates. Uh, Chief, you have anything for us, sir? Uh, yeah, I'll just get to the, the first uh, before I started that. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody that was able to make it yesterday to the memorial service from the from the board. Uh, saw several of you, Ms. King and uh, Andre. Uh, Chief Boone was there with some of his staff, so we appreciate that. That's a that's a big deal for for us. Uh, we weren't able to have it last year, you know, just to uh, remember the the officers that were lost in the line of duty and. You know, for some of us that have been here um, long enough, uh, knowing some some of those officers that uh, we've lost. So we appreciate you guys taking your time in the middle of the day like that to come out, really do. Um, so if we, if we get into the June 4th, or I'm sorry, 24th day, uh, we'll probably be approaching that, that second quarter. So I should be able to give you the stats on, on the complaints there for the second quarter. At that point, we already went over the first quarter a couple of meetings ago, um, but I think as far as the, you know, the notable thing that that, that I've seen in the last couple of weeks, all the new faces down here. Um, we just hired three, three officers about a week ago uh, that went to the academy as of Monday. So we have three down in Champaign getting trained. Uh, the, the week previous to that, um, we had 10 officers uh, graduate from the academy that are back here and we're going through what we call a rookie school which means just familiarization with the department before they go out on the street and start getting trained and then we have 10 uh, 10 other officers that are getting towards the end of the training so uh, this off uh, you know I use when you start seeing that many folks you know 23 young officers out there you start to see a kind of a whole transition of, of the police department, uh, which happens maybe once every five to 10 years where, you know, you, the, the top end starting to leave and, and you're getting a lot of those uh, newer officers out there. Uh, you know, which two different things on that. You're losing hundreds of years of experience sometimes on the on the other end, but, you know, you get an opportunity to, uh, to have these new officers out there and, and, and uh, uh, to start their career and, and be molded into you know the the new way of, of doing things and interacting with the community. So uh, the exciting stuff. And I you know even I've been here 28 years. I still remember my first year more than any of them. Um, it's it definitely changes you. And so I, I get to talk to these officers when they before they leave for the academy and then when they come back and you see a little bit of change with them even that 14 weeks of how. Uh, they get a little structure in their life, a little, little discipline, um, and you know, far from being ready to go out there on their own when they get back from the academy, but lots of uh, continued training when they get back. So, all that's going on down here, and, and you get to you get to learn all the new names too, and, and meet the new people, um, see what they're about, where they're from, and and try to guide them uh, on their path for for their career. Hopefully, they're here for a real long time. So that's sorry. No, but do you know how many officers have retired this year by any chance, including Donna Sue and Skelly? Well, Donna and Mike uh, Keller are still here. Uh, uh, Captain Skelly's last day is Monday, and then I've heard that Donna will uh, possibly be leaving here pretty soon. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're. I think we had about when I think it was 19 last year and we're probably we're about s between seven and ten I think uh, maybe seven now and we're gonna have a few more here coming up so yeah I think every once in a while you have you have some time frames you know in a, in a decade where, where there's a lot of people hired at one time and then they all kind of start to leave at the same time where they hit that 25, 30 year mark. Scally's a whole exception thing. He did more than four decades. He did but, uh, seven years. Yeah, 43, 43 years he's been here. Um, but, you know, they hire, they seem to hire people in groups of, you know, time frames, whether, whether those are budget things in the past or we started getting short for whatever reason. And it seems like you start to see people leave on that. Um, but this is the first time I can remember we've had this many recruits getting trained at the same time. Um, so, 
you know, 25, 30 years from now, maybe they'll all be retired at the same time. Hopefully that's the goal for them, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, it. it's nice to see. It's, it's nice to see that energy and, uh, you know, obviously the, the job's changing a little bit, um, but they won't know any different, right? They're, this is a chance for them to come out and see it the way they want. They they get to see it, see the way they want to see it. So it's uh, it's nice to see. And, and definitely from my perspective, from, from being here as long as I have to, to get to see that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say this too, uh, cause I, I saw the Facebook posts of all the, the new recruits that were hired, very diverse group. Um, I knew uh, a, a couple of them as well too. Uh, and I was like, okay, now, all right, you know, we got a good mixture of, uh, of ages and genders and, 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 and races. And um, yeah, there was a couple I was like, okay, all right, that's, that's awesome. So I, I, I definitely uh, applaud the recruitment. And then also too, I know they had to get through their testing and everything too. So I'm excited for this, this new recruitment group. I really am. Um, any other additional questions for, uh, for Chief, Dr. Zagardo? Yeah, you know, Andre, because I, I was actually going to ask exactly what you, you just said with all these people leaving and all these people coming on. I wonder if sometime soon we could get an update on the uh, new demographics of the um, officers, because I know we had some dem de demographic goals in terms of age and gender, uh, race. Um, so it sounds like, you know, things could be changing and I'd love to see, you know, what the implications are with these new new people once they're hired and the and the retirees are gone. If we could get an update on that. Yeah, I provided. I, I did do uh, some of that for council a while back. Um, so we keep we keep those uh, statistics monthly. You know, with with the moving parts of all of that. Um, I know, Janice. I'm not going to personally go up and ask somebody how old they are. I can tell you that. <laughs> you know, they, I'm kidding. But uh, we, we do track that. And I, I will say, you know, over the last three years, when I started looking at this, you know, when I got into the administrative side of things, I think the average age, um, for, you know, talking about commission, the, the police officers, not any of our civilian staff, I think it was about 40, 41. And over the course of just coincidentally over the three year time period, the average went down about three years. And, and I'm guessing with this whole new group, um, um, well, of course, with, you know, Captain Scali leaving that help, no, I'm kidding. That, I mean, you know, he, that you're gonna see that difference um, that we could we could go down a whole nother year, year of average age by hiring, you know, 20 young people. Um, you know, we, we, are, we are in that 36 to 37 year old average for the entire police department. And I, I will definitely say that when I got hired, it, to me, and I was young, it just seemed like the average age was like 50. You know, there, there, was, a, there was a lot of, uh, of veteran officers here on the, on the high end of, um, when I got hired, um, see, senior officers that, that ended up retiring. So, you know, and in reference to the demographics, uh, we can easily get that and I can bring it up, you know, under the new business when we talk next time. Um, they're just like Andre was talking about, I, you know, the diversity, uh, has been pretty good on, on the, on the most recent hires. Uh, we are still struggling. I think personally, what I see, I think we're still struggling a little bit on the numbers for females, but you know, we, we, that comes on the front end of things. We got to get, uh, more to take the test. We got to get, you know, in order to get them hired, we got to have more people test and, and. But females, um, as of late, it, it seems to be uh, uh, a little less than what we're used to as far as taking that test. So hopefully we can, you know, keep our recruiting efforts up and, and maybe see a change in that. Ms. King, did I see you had a, a hand up there? Um, I probably should know this, but I don't remember. I remember at one time, that the new recruits were assigned to the field before they went to school. And I just wondered if that's a policy, if it's in effect, or was that just a one-time only thing? Uh, you mean like getting out in the car and being out there? Is that what you're, you're saying? 
I thought they assigned them in the field. I don't know if they were with the residential officers, oh, but they okay. were assigned. They were assigned out to be out among the people before they actually came on. Yeah, they did kind of a pilot program um, over the, and that's actually the the most recent graduates uh, that that we had. Not this the group before. Um, they were actually assigned to community development out there, and they were going out. Uh, um, the city kind of just actually hired them to work in the community development prior to them going to the academy. Now, some of not all of them got to because some of them still had their previous jobs and, and so forth. But a, a good portion of those uh, that graduated from the academy recently actually did work for the city in that capacity um, for some time before they went to the camp. Uh, to the police academy, um, and, you know, and I think the goal was to, to expose them to uh, the city. And I, and I think some of them were from the city already, but um, to get them out there in the community uh, and start interacting with people uh, at certain levels uh, before they even actually get sworn in. So Joe Doolin had a lot to do with that from community service and, and, and that pilot program. And uh, we're definitely looking, you know, with the potential to do that in the future. Um, I was that's not my, not my department, but uh, we, we did have some uh, some good results from that. Okay, I was wondering what the assessment was and if they would continue. Yeah, I think just overall, you know, some people are a little bit hesitant to quit their, their day job, if you want to call it, um, before they actually, you know, raise that hand and get sworn in and move and do all the things they have to do for if their ambition is actually a police officer. Uh, but we did have we did have some uh, some of the group uh, that that did do it. Uh, I think it was maybe over half. Um, so yeah. Good question. It'd be interesting to hear the perspectives of those who did those police officers. Lorraine, I was just thinking that'd be a great topic for one of our meetings. I was just thinking the exact same thing. I wonder if they thought that was an easier transition to our community and. And even to hear Joe Doolin's perspective as to how, you know, how, how they, whether he wants to continue the program. We can have him pull up, put him on the agenda. <laughs> well, Mr. Chair, you got everybody rolling now in these things. <laughs> hey, I love it. Every, hey, the momentum, we rolling, we rolling. So no, I, I think that's good. Sorry, I work for Joe and I will be here um, for a little bit. So I can definitely talk to Joe. Okay. And see if maybe that's something he'd like to do. Yeah, 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 definitely reach out and uh, if he confirms and yeah, we can, uh, we can put Joe and, uh, and any of the recruits that matriculated to being an officer, we can put them on the agenda uh, for June and they can talk to us. Okay. All right. I'll follow back up. Sounds good. Thanks, Megan. Um, yep. With, if there's no additional questions for Chief, uh, we'll go ahead and, and move forward now uh, to uh, any items for the good of the cause. Um, Megan, go ahead and, and, and tell us again, where you're going, what, what, what you, what you're pursuing in grad school, you know, go ahead and break up, break our heart real quick again. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be moving by the end of this summer out to Washington, DC, um, to pursue graduate studies in museum studies. So I'm actually taking a change in course and I've, really discovered my passions and I'm really excited. Good for you. Good for you. I'm going to tell you, once you've been in DC where all the museums are quote free, you're going <laughs> to really be confused yeah. when you pay so much. But I'm telling you something, I'm going to give a pitch for the Riverfront Museum. When you buy your <laughs> Riverfront Museum membership, you get, if you flip your card over on the back, you have a um, consortium of museums that you can get into for the price of your Riverfront Museum. I've gotten into museums all over for free just with that little Riverfront Museum card. So uh, oh, wow. the, the museums in Washington, D.C. are paid for by the federal taxpayers. Yeah. So then there's a million of them and they're fabulous. So good luck. <laughs> That's a Thank place you. to be. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. it's, I'm very, very excited to, to kind of be in the hub of of everything, um, I'm I'm very very excited. But I just wanted to thank you all for you know having me on this committee. I joined three years ago, and 
I, I think I've changed since then and I've really grown, but I, I one thing that always has been constant. Sorry, I <laughs> has okay. just been like my participation um on this board and you know, I, I'm just so thankful to share this space and I really hope this committee um can grow and and I'm excited and I really think this is this is vital to the community. Um, so I just wish you all the best, but thanks for having me. It's, it's been a great, you know, journey. I, I've gotten to know a lot more people than, you know, I had expected to, and I built great relationships. So thank you again. Well, Megan, I want to thank you. And one of the things you were doing that really intrigued me uh, as your membership on this committee was your, I think at one point, you know, so, so since everything fell apart last year, we couldn't pursue this stuff. But I, I think you remember telling us that you were working with the kids at Richwood and maybe some other schools. I'd love to figure out how we can not drop the ball on that and continue that with our committee. I, I don't know if you have any ideas between now and when yeah. you Yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure if that committee is still inactive. I know Officer Daniel Duncan was the spearhead. Um, but since his retirement, I'm not quite sure who's taken over. So I can definitely follow up and see if that's something that the police department still um, is involved with. Because I'm not quite sure now who took it over. Well, maybe Chief Boone could get it going in one of his schools. Yeah, that's a that's a good, you know, I think that Explorers uh, program, if that's what you're referring to, is a, it's a good opportunity. Um, I had someone actually reach out to me um, who's who has a student at Dunlap that is interested in, in law enforcement and uh, African young African American uh, gentleman, um, 16, knows he wants to be a police officer and they were trying to figure out ways to get him exposed. And so um, I found out that Explorers program is currently on hold right now, but hopefully, you know, now that things are opening back up we can get it back rolling, start creating that pipeline early. We could actually invite him to one of our meetings. But the other thing is, since uh, Megan said that she's going to be here till the end of the summer, maybe we can get back together in person then and have a send off for Andre and Megan and also Chief Marion. Or, or Chief Theobald, you mean? No, Chief Marion. Well, oh, Chief yeah. too, but we never had anything for Chief Marion when he left. That's true. We could bring him back. Lorraine we is our designated party planner. That's for sure. <laughs> so he gave me his, he gave me his phone number. I said, if we have anything else, I'm definitely going to call you up and let you know. <laughs> hey, let's make it happen. Any excuse to have cake or booze, I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. Cake for me, man, for sure. We had ice, we had ice tea. <laughs> Water. <laughs> whatever your whatever your vice is, team no judge, team no judge, <laughs> team no judge. Well, Meg, we appreciate your your service, and 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 we know you'll be fine. Um, you're a good person, and your heart's always in the right place. And so we wish you the best. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep being great. Thank you. Yep, so, no. Megan, if you still have the same email address, we can still keep in touch. Yes, I will give you my personal email address. I believe I still have my city one oh, okay. on the email. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Um, any additional items for the good of the cause before we get ready to roll up out of here? I do think that you and Janice have done a fantastic job in moving us from a spot that we've been in for so long. We were kind of stagnant and now it's more dynamic and progressive and visionary. And so I really appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. King. You know, that's, you know, it, it, it helps to have good people like you all. And, um, you know, I know you yeah, all- we need, we need new people to move it forward though, you know? Yeah, yeah. So be thinking about it tonight when you're just walking past your bedroom mirror or bathroom mirror and you say, hey, I'm ready to be the chair or hey, I'm ready to be vice chair. You know, or hey, I'm ready to take up, maybe take my just commitment level to the next level, you know. Wow. I'll be taking a back seat so, you know, let the young people step up. <laughs> what? You 51. What you talking about? Pardon? You're 51. What are you talking about? Tell the truth. Tell the truth, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that's that. Well, I think we're in the final minute of the, of the meeting. I appreciate you all today. 
Um, you know, it's always a pleasure to, to connect with you all today and, and, and taking time out of your, uh, your, your Thursday. Uh, thanks to Saul for being here with us. And then uh, I think uh, our, um, I appreciate uh, our representative from WNBD for being on the call with us as well too and, and, and covering our meeting. Um, we will move forward. So be on the lookout uh, for those attachments, dive into those. Um, so you can kind of see some of the results from the chief of uh, police survey results. Um, and yeah, from there, man, let's just stay safe, keep being great out here and let's keep moving forward. Thanks, Andrew. I think the meeting be adjourned. <laughs> I'll second. All righty, thank you. Christina, can you perform a role, please? Andre? Yay. Uh, Allison? Yay. Nikolai? Yay. Lorraine? Yes. Megan? Yes. Chief Theobald? Yes. Karen? Yes. And Janice? Yes. Good night, everybody. All Bye -bye. right. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Everybody.